Because I happen to think that stories are the gateway to just about everything, I've loaded the library with stories. But you'll also find enrichment pages in connection to each of the countries in the American history topics. You'll be able to access them on each of the individual landing pages. So let's go take a look. Let's access one through the rotation page. Let's just go to France. And here's what I call the landing page. And of course, you can access all the books in the library from here. But to get to the enrichment page, you click here. There are also enrichment activities on the nature topic pages. You don't have to have an extra step like this. But for the countries and for American history, this is how you'll access them. The purpose of these enrichment pages is exactly what the name implies. It's to enrich learning. So let me throw out some ideas for using the resources found here. First, you'll find some craft ideas that are organized on Pinterest pages. There is something wonderfully satisfying about creating, and this gives you some ideas of things to create in connection with each of the topics of study, and which connects you to a cultural, which has a cultural connection to people all over the world. I've tried to find activities that will appeal to a variety of ages, from little kids on up to older kids. It's not that the craft themselves are necessarily educational, but if you can find things to keep your children's hands busy, you can use it as an opportunity to have them listen to music or to read them stories that they may not ordinarily be willing to listen to. It's a fun activity for family bonding. And do take pictures and include them in your cultural notebook, whatever you happen to call yours. You certainly don't have to craft every day, but do what works for you and your family. You'll also notice some cooking ideas. In Hebrew tradition, to break bread with someone is to make a friend of a stranger. When you cook food from other nations, it provides another tangible link to other people and their cultures. Plus, I think it's fun to try new and interesting dishes. Cooking together is another great bonding activity. Maybe plan at least one cultural night a month and have everyone create a different dish. Bring out cultural decorations such as bright tissue flowers for Mexico or share the crafts that were made or make the craft as part of the fun. Put on some folk music in the background from the country to give you a little ambiance and um, maybe even learn a few words or phrases from that country while you're sitting around the table and take pictures, of course. Now, if you scroll down, you'll find some simple plays. No, you don't have to make big productions of any of these. Parts don't even have to be memorized. Plays were used in the era of heart education that I keep drawing from as a means of awakening interest, but also to teach reading and language skills. Let me read a little intro from one of their books. I have This is written by a teacher. I have often been asked questions of the sort. How do you teach your children to speak so well? Their pronunciation is correct, their enunciation is clear, and their voice is well modulated and truly expressive. Why is it that the boys and girls talk so intelligently in the classroom during a history or geography or English literature and composition period? How do you train your children to be so self-contained and at ease when meeting strangers? Why is it that in none of your classes does there seem to be any of the old drill in facts and forms, but rather there's always a happy, pleasing spirit of interest and enthusiasm which makes the lesson periods fly fast? Well, if these things appeal to you, you might want to consider adding more dramatics into your day, more plays. Every subject that you teach can come alive and be made interesting when you engage your children in living out what they're studying through plays. A famous teacher, after watching a group of children act out a play from history, said to someone else standing next to her, You have seen today the difference between formal teaching and real education of the child. Educo means I lead forth that which is within. The dramatic instinct that is in every child is one of the greatest powers in helping a mother educate her children. These plays can involve the whole family, even dad. Everyone gets a part. Invite other families to join in or double up on parts if you need to. Use simple props. 
From time to time, your children may want to actually memorize the parts and put on a performance, but it doesn't have to be that involved. Print out the plays. Let's go into one of these plays. Let's go to the Maid of Orleans. And these plays are all linked to Internet Archive. And you'll notice up here at the top is a PDF option. And um, just click on that and you'll be able to print out the play. You don't have to print out the whole book. You can just select the pages that you need to print out. And then you can give everyone their parts and they can highlight them and mark them, take them in their rooms and practice, especially adding the emotion to their voice. And then when they come together, everyone gets a part and you can pull the play together. Chances are your kids will want to start writing their own plays after a while. Putting on plays was a favorite pastimes of children that you read in the old books. Louisa May Alcott comes to mind as one of them. They just loved putting on plays as, as sisters, as family, not even necessarily for anyone else to watch. I'm still adding plays as I find them to the list. And you may want to note that I generally organize these plays on a list so that the first plays are for younger children and then they get um, they get progressively more mature, I guess you would say. The, la the latter plays are for older children. Use your imaginations as to how you might be able to incorporate plays into your home life. Puppets maybe, making a video of them, or just a reader's theater. I hope you'll have fun with them. They really can make a difference. Next on the enrichment page, you're going to find movies to watch. Don't we all love movies? I haven't watched all of these. I'll warn you that. A lot of them are old, cheesy Hollywood movies, but they often bring the times and the characters to life and help children visualize more clearly what they're reading. It adds more pictures to the words in their books. Many of the movies are filmed on location of the place that they might be studying. If you click on a movie, it's going to take you to IMDb, where you can read more about the movie for yourself. It lets you know if it's a prime video that you can watch it online, and uh, you'll find reviews of the movie. And particularly, I want you to note that if you scroll down here, there is an option for a parent's guide and you can view content advisory. So you can find out if this is a movie that's appropriate for your family. Don't just take my word because it's there that it's going to be the right fit for your family. But there's a lot of fun movies in here. Next, let's move on to the fine art. This is a work in progress. I still have a lot I want to do with, these, with this section, but here's a start at least. If you remember the fine art page on the old website, all those images have now been sorted by country and placed in the rotation schedule on these enrichment pages. The pictures were sorted either by the nationality of the artist or by the location of the scene. And you'll notice that they are sorted by home and family pictures and historical. So let's go take a look. These again are linked to Pinterest pages. Like I've said so many times, we are naturally drawn to the familiar, so your younger children may best relate to the family and home scenes to begin with, while your older children may enjoy seeing the depictions of historical scenes and locations. Study them one at a time or, or print them out for your notebooking pages. Sometimes they are easier to view on a tablet, or they can even be projected on a larger TV screen. Some moms like to print them out and display a picture a week on the fridge and then put them in a sheet protector cover and keep them in notebooks to be viewed later. It's up to you. And as you click on each of these pictures, they will, if you click twice, it will take you to a full screen image. I'll show you that in just a minute. Just a heads up, if you liked the way that the pictures were organized in the old website, if you scroll down to the bottom of any page and go to the search field, if you'll enter in art for home and family and search, just pick the first option that comes up and it will take you to this page where you can see the pictures are all organized the way that they were on the old home, on the old website and the different topics. These are the home and family pictures. I don't, the history pictures are all sorted by the country. Let's go in and look at one of these pages. Here's reading. I want to show you something I've started to do with art that was inspired by Jack Laws in his nature journaling workshop. 
Let's um, take a look at this page, this picture. Like I mentioned, if you click on it twice, it will bring up a full screen option so it's easier for you to see. What Jack showed us is how silly it really is to tell a child to look really hard at something. Try it. Go ahead. Look really, really hard at this painting. Go ahead. Are you looking really hard? What are you supposed to look at? What's the point, right? Now watch what happens when I apply the three tools he gave us. The three tools are I notice, I wonder, and that reminds me of. I notice there's a kind of light that seems to be shining from the book into the faces of the children who are looking at it. I wonder if it's a Bible. It looks like one, and the light reminds me that the word is a lamp unto my feet, a light in my life. I notice how the brother has his arm around the sister, how comfortable they seem to be around each other, how much they must love each other. In fact, I notice the heart that's in the chair that the mother is sitting on. This is a home that is grounded in love. I notice the brother is so engaged in what they're reading, he has put his piece of bread down on the floor next to him. It reminds me that the word of the Lord is often referred to as the bread of life, and he who eats of this bread will never hunger again. I notice that they don't appear to be rich, at least materially. Their home is furnished very simply. The children are sitting on the floor. But I notice the look of contentment on the mother's face. I notice she has an appreciation for beauty. She has taken the time to grow a rose on her windowsill, and I wonder if she is the one who has painted the roses on her cabinet. I also notice the letter on the windowsill with the rose next to it. I notice that whoever gave it to her must know of her love for roses. It is the perfect gift for her. I wonder if the letter is from her husband. I wonder if he's away from home. Is he a soldier? Does he travel for work? Or is he just thoughtful and has given her a love letter that has made her smile with contentment? Of course, I notice the books overhead, and I notice the open window. I can almost feel the fresh breezes blowing through, and I notice in the center of the window, and really the central part of the painting, the spires of a chapel. It reminds me of how faith is the center of my soul and my life, and probably hers. I notice the spinning wheel in front of the mother. There is work to be done. There's always work to be done. But it reminds me of those rare moments when I pause and just feel contentment in the moment for life and reflect on my blessings and the goodness of home and family and everything that really matters. In those moments, I feel very rich. Now, I have no idea if the artist intended these things, but these are the things I noticed and connected to, and it makes me love this painting. And as I take the time to notice and wonder, it's as though each detail of the painting is etched on the wall of the gallery in my own heart, and I can close my eyes and see the painting and feel all the feelings associated with it and it makes me happy. Another term for this is picture talk, and it will help to bring paintings to life for your children. And um, as you do this with them a few times, they'll start applying it for themselves. Just be careful to not kill it by making it a chore or an assignment. The paintings I've included on the enrichment page work wonderfully for an activity like this. Now let's go back to the enrichment page. Finally, at the bottom of the page, you'll find music. You can listen to one piece at a time, maybe play it while you're eating lunch or breakfast or working on a craft, or some moms have created playlists of the whole month's selections. All I'm trying to suggest with this is to make fine music familiar to the ears of your children. If a particular country has unique instruments, I look for YouTubes of those. For instance, I love the Balalaika Orchestra from Russia. I watch it over and over again, and I look for famous conductors like Leonard Bernstein, who were so expressive as they conducted, and the YouTube show their faces up close. I really like that. I look for orchestras all over the world playing the same compositions, subtly teaching our children that music is a universal language. There are no enemies in music like this. 
and occasionally I found rare gems like Debussy himself playing his own composition. Sometimes I found artwork or scenes from the country that accompanies the music. You may want to play them on your TV if you can, and I think even little children like to see close-ups of the various instruments as they're played. You'll find ballets and occasional opera from the world's greatest performances, and I try to include some background music, some folk music, to give a feel for the flavor of the country that you're studying and to enrich the study. If you'd like to throw in some simple music appreciation lessons, if you scroll down a little bit further to the music and story section, if you click on the text beneath the YouTube, it will take you to program notes from the North Carolina Youth Symphony series that um, have taken place over the last several de decades. Here is a simple way to share a little bit about the composer and what the children are going to listen to, to pique their interest and to increase their enjoyment. Then you can go back and click on the YouTube above to listen to the musical selection. Looks like I need to replace one right here. I'm constantly adding to these resources as I can. And I hope that they'll bring an added measure of joy to the learning going on in your home.